Hey guys, it's Guilherme, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the design and implementation of a dialogue system. This is the first part of two in this series, and here we're going to see how to use JSON to set up a conversation, how to set different characters for each phrase that you're going to show in your dialogue, and also how you can load the dialogue from the JSON. And this is the approach that we are using in the open source RPG demo. And before getting started, let's see how the dialogue system is currently working. I'll start a conversation with this NPC and here you can see that it's telling me that I found something and then another character is telling me that you don't know what it is but at least it's something and then the conversation ends. And all of the parts of the conversation are being loaded from the JSON and in the JSON we not only define the phrases that the characters are gonna say but also which facial expression that character is gonna have when he's saying said phrase. I've been talking a lot about JSON and if you don't know what a JSON file is, you're probably wondering, well, what am I talking about? And JSON is a file format often used to transmit data over the internet, but it can also be used to just hold data. And in this project, all of the JSON files that have to do with our dialogue system are inside of the data folder inside of our dialogue folder. And you might wonder why there are any files under this folder right here. And it's because the JSON is not a built-in type of Godot. So to see that file, we'll have to click with the right mouse button and open this in our file manager. And here we can open the JSON file with any text editor that we are used to. In my case, it's going to be Visual Studio Code. And here you can see the structure that we have inside of a JSON file. The open and closing curly brackets tell us where our JSON files starts and ends. And then we have a structure that is really similar to a dictionary. And that's why it's also been converted into a dictionary by Godot after we load it into our game. The first element is a key that later we're going to use to access each phrase inside of our dialog. And the value that is inside of this key is another dictionary, which again has different key value pairs. In this case, we have a name to define which character is going to say that phrase the expression that this character is going to use when saying that phrase, in this case, both of them are neutral. And then we have the text that's going to be shown in the dialog box. In this case, if you remember from the previous demo, it's both you found something and I don't know what it is, but at least it's something. And as we saw before, the first phrase is said by Godete with a neutral expression. And the second one is said by Robbie again with a neutral expression. One could argue well, if a JSON file is so similar to a dictionary, why don't we just use a dictionary instead of our code? Well, by using a JSON file, it's way easier to add more lines of conversation inside of our dialog without having to deal with code. And also for someone who is not used to programming, for instance, a game designer, who is probably already familiar with JSON files, it's really easy to get someone new to your team and have him already be productive and be able to use the tools that you created. So just to show you, I'm going to add a new line of text here. And I have to rename this to 003. And let's say that Godete is the one that's going to talk. The expression has to be neutral because as of now, we don't have any other expressions to show. Make good use of it nonetheless. Now we can save our JSON file and go back to our game. I'll start the dialogue once again. And you found something. I don't know what it is, but at least it's something and make good use of it nonetheless. So you can already see how easy it is to add new phrases, make edits, and also create different dialogues for our characters. Now let's see how this JSON file gets loaded and also converted into a dictionary inside of our game. This is done inside of our dialogue action. So I'm going to search for this script and open it in the script editor. And here we export a variable called dialog file path which is the path for our JSON file inside of our project. And then we have the interact function, which is a function that is called whenever the player interacts with this action. Here we start the dialog dictionary inside of the dialog variable, which is being returned from our load dialog function that takes the dialog path that we just received from our exported variable. We then play this dialog and wait until this dialog is completed. And we emit a signal telling that this action has been finished. Now, all of the magic happens inside of the load dialog function, which again takes the path to the JSON file, which is holding the dialog. And to parse the JSON file into a dictionary, we first have to create a new instance of the file class. And in this line, we are making sure that the file that we are trying to load really exists. 
And to do so, we use the file exists function, which returns true if the path that we are trying to load exists. And in the case that this expression here returning true, we're going to continue with the execution of this function. And then we are going to open this file in the read mode because we only want to read the information and not write anything to the file. We then use the parse JSON function, which is going to take a JSON file and parse it into a dictionary. And we pass to it the file that we just opened as a text. And in this line, we are making sure that our dialog has a size which is greater than zero, because if it isn't, then there's probably an error inside of the JSON file because it couldn't be parsed correctly. And because of that, we got an empty dictionary. And again, if this expression is true, we're going to return our dialog. And just so we can see the result of this function, I'm gonna place a breakpoint on the return statement and run our game again. And now when I start the dialog, we're going to hit that breakpoint. And as you can see down here inside of our debugger, we have the dialog variable and we can see that it is a dictionary with three items inside of it. And each item is again another dictionary, which reassembles what we had inside of our JSON file. And that's it. We loaded the dialog from our JSON and it's ready to be used in our dialog box. We are going to take a look into that in the next video of this series. And as always, you can find the complete project in GitHub and I'll see you in the next one.